Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, before we were talking about how permanent magnetic field acts on the electric current. This lecture is about the magnetic field which is produced by electric current. Now, this lecture is called Magnetism of a Straight Line Current, so we are talking only about straight line current. It's part of the course called Physics for Teen for teens presented on unisor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture and every other lecture from the website because all lectures have very nice detailed notes, basically like a textbook. And uh, there are exams if you want to. Um, there is certain functionality of the website which you can definitely use as an educational process. Um, now the website has no advertisement and it's completely free. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. So, okay, let's get back to the business. So again, before we were talking about um, electric current in some kind of a magnetic field, usually uniform magnetic field. You remember the, the Lorentz force? Now, let's go back to the beginning of the origin of magnetism. In particular, I would like to remind you again, and we did talk about this before, um, the uh, Ampere model of magnetism. So if you remember, um, the magnetism is usually explained by electrons which are moving on an orbit around the nucleus. So this is an electron, this is a nucleus, and electrons are circling around the nucleus. Well, that's the model, again. doesn't really matter what, what's in the real life. We don't really know exactly what's there. But anyway, electrons are something uh, which we consider in this model as rotating around the nucleus. They also have their own spin around their own axis. So all these movements, actually, are involved in producing the magnetic effect. So, um, if you have two electrons, for instance, on, um, on the same axis, let's say, these are two different atoms, but they are on the same axis, and they're all, uh, all these electrons are circulating in parallel planes in the same direction, that's what actually makes the magnetic properties of some kind of an object. If all these axes of rotation are uh, not uh, parallel to each other, then there is no magnet magnetism. Well, that's the model. Now, in particular, let's consider electrons which are on the same plane and parallel, and parallel uh, axis of rotation. And again, it's the same rotation. Now, as you see, this is rotating, let's say, in this way, and this is rotating in this way. So here, where they are touching each other, they are rotating in opposite directions, right? This is this way, and this is this way. It's the same rotation from the rotation perspective, but locally they are going into different directions, which makes this uh, electrically neutral. There is no current, basically, in this particular area of the object. But where is the current? The current is only on the outer boundary of the object. So if this is a magnet, let's say, a natural permanent magnet, then only on the surface you have the real movement of electrons. Inside, the electrons are actually kind of neutralizing each other. It's a model. We are not talking about the reality. It's a model. But it's a good model because it corresponds experimentally to whatever we observe in the, in, in the reality. Now, this is an Ampere model. And what it actually implies is that let's forget about inner structure of some kind of a magnet. If you will just have a loop and put some kind of current in it, plus, minus. So this is the loop. That's basically equivalent to this flow of electrons on an out outer perimeter of the permanent magnet. So it should have permanent uh, magnet properties. 
it should be magnetic field, it should attract certain other objects, etc. So, obviously experiments were conducted and air experiments confirmed that this actually is basically um, something which has the same properties as a permanent magnet. This is north, this is south, so this is north and this is south. And you remember about magnetic lines, magnetic lines are going from north to the south and then inside the magnet they're going back. So it's this way and inside they go back this way. This is the permanent magnet. Exactly the same kind of magnetic lines, magnetic field lines, are observed in the case of electric uh, current in a loop. So the magnetic lines are going this way. This is north and this is south. Now, how did we confirm it? Well, very simply. What happens if you put the magnet flat on the surface and then you will put iron filings just drop on this surface well they will actually line up in some kind of a form which basically resembles the magnetic lines because every particular um, fragment every a piece of this filing becomes a temporary magnet uh, polarized so north of one particle connects to the south of another particle and and they are actually um, forming something which resembles the lines it's really visible now if instead of permanent magnet here we will have an electric current okay this is the upper part and underneath there is a bottom part so this is the current and obviously we can connect to plus and minus so there is a um, uh, electrical current in it you will observe exactly the same kind of a picture with one from this to this this type of a picture will be observed I put the photographs of this experiment actually in the notes to my lecture, to this lecture. So if you will go to the website and read the notes, the notes contain really the photograph of all these um, filings around um, the electrical circuit in a loop. Okay, so we've done with the loop. Loop has again north and south poles. It behaves exactly like a permanent magnet let's say bar magnet <coughs> the next thing which I would like to do is I would like to open up the loop let's just think about it if this is a loop this is plus and minus and we were talking about um, that one side of this is basically north another is south and the magnetic field lines go around it. Okay? Now, what I would like to do is I would like to open this loop. Now, from just purely intuitive uh, standpoint, there is nothing to change actually. The current is still running and the way how I shaped this loop shouldn't really matter for magnetic field which is produced by electric current. So it should still be the electric current. So if I will open it up, this loop, I will have a current in the straight line and magnetic field would still exist around it and magnetic field lines would be around it like this. And again, experiment shows that this is true. If you will take a flat surface 
and put vertical um, electric current and put some kind of a current plus minus and then you will use the same iron filings and drop on this surface they will form circular shapes around it and again I put the photograph of this in the notes for this lecture so experiment confirms basically this model and now what we have to really do is just to qualitatively and quantitatively evaluate the magnetic field around this type of thing <coughs> so we are talking about magnetic field intensity B which is a vector now before when we were talking about magnetic field and electric current we usually used the uniform magnetic field when all magnetic lines are parallel to each other and the strength of the field is exactly the same and that's how if you remember we have determined that if you have this magnetic field and you have some kind of a line with electric current and it's the line I it's perpendicular to the vector of um, the magnetic field intensity then there is kind of force also a vector which is um, proportional to I times uh, L which is length of the conductor and vector product uh, with B well vector product just to make sure if it's perpendicular the vector product is basically you can consider all of them as a scalars but if it's an angle uh, let's say vertical um, magnetic field and this is not perpendicular to it but it's at some 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 angle then the sign of angle between this direction and this direction it's supposed to be getting involved and that's what makes it a vector product and they put everything in in my lecture for this particular thing so this is this is related but this is the uniform magnetic field in this case the field is not uniform more than that in this case we have polarity north and south lines go from north to south in this case there is no polarity that's interesting actually we are talking about magnetic field which does not have north and south poles because all directions are exactly equivalent if you will put a compass on this top it will line up north-south direction along this and it will point uh, this way but here under the wire uh, the same compass will point north to this uh, it will always be in sync with the magnetic line so there is no polarity so to speak however the vector does exist so this is the direction of the vector it's always tangential to uh, the magnetic line so our purpose is to determine the magnitude so we know the direction it's always um, so it's always perpendicular to the eye obviously to the current this is the current so this is in the plane perpendicular to the current so all magnetic lines are in corresponding planes perpendicular to the current and the vector of magnetic field intensity is in that plane um, tangential to the circle which magnetic lines actually make okay now magnetic lines exist on different radiuses so within the same plane if you will cut it with a plane like this you will have obviously magnetic lines on the different uh, uh, circles of different radius all concentric obviously and the picture which I was showed to you when the vertical wire and the flat surface and iron um, filing it shows concentric circles around it so on every plane perpendicular to the eye you have well obviously infinite number of magnetic lines but we are just drawing certain number 
<coughs> and they're all concentric um, circles. Okay, so at any point, from the consideration of symmetry, it's kind of obvious that the magnitude should be the same if we are on the same radius, because it's all kind of cylindrically symmetrical. We can always turn the pic turn the wire without basically changing anything because we are considering this is a thin wire um, and uh, it should not really change any kind of a distribution of the forces uh, in the magnetic field. So that's why this um, magnetic field intensity depends basically only on the radius. It's perpendicular to the radius, it's tangen tangential to the circle of this radius and the magnitude we have to determine. That's a very interesting um, consideration right now, but I'm going to talk about this magnitude. Um, it generally comes from the just general concept of a field. We had a gravitational field, we had electrostatic field, etc. Let's just think about the field as certain form of energy which is emitted from the source. In this case, the source is this line, a uh, straight line with a current in it, electric current. In case of uh, electrostatic, it can be a point charge. Um, it can, in the case of uh, gravitation, it's a planet and the gravitational force around it. So in all those cases, we have certain um, source of this, I would, I would call it energy. I, I, it's reasonable to call the field a form of energy. So there is a source of this energy and energy is emitted. So at any moment of time, let's say it's emitted not in a constant like flow, for instance, like from the gravitation, gravitation but just exists. But let's just imagine for a second that we have an impulse, an impulse of gravitation. It goes all around the source of this gravitation, uh, right? Now, at certain time, uh, it reaches certain frontier, this impulse. So, if you have this impulse of, let's say, gravity or electrostatic, <coughs> at certain speed, actually the speed of light, it goes to a, a new frontier. And this energy is spread around this frontier. At certain other moment, it goes a little bit further and again, it reaches certain new frontier and it's spread around it. Now, the density uh, of this energy per unit of area of that surface, so we're talking about a surface of, of equal timing, so to speak. All right? So whenever this energy is reaching a new surface of equal timing, it's basically spread around. And if you remember, in case, for instance, of... Um, uh, gravitational field, it's inversely proportional to uh, square of the distance. Why? Well, because it's spherical, right? So if you have a point uh, charge, let's say gravity charge or electrostatic charge, doesn't really matter, then the surface of equal timing is a sphere around it. The greater the timing, the greater the radius right because it reaches the new frontier every new moment of time and the area of a, sur of a surface of a sphere is 4 pi r square so it's proportional to r square that's why we are spreading this energy to a bigger and bigger um, surface of uh, equal timing and the area of the surface is proportional to square of a distance and that's why the intensity of the field on that area of uh, 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 that surface of the e e equal timing is inversely proportional because we are spreading to a, a bigger area. Same thing here. <coughs> the only thing, the area is not spherical. Now, what area of equal surface of equal timing in, in this particular case? Well, it's a cylinder, obviously. If this is a source of, elect uh, of magnetic field, then we have a at, uh, at, at equal time, the surface uh, reached by these um, impulses of energy, if you wish, is a cylinder. 
Now, if you have a, let's say, finite length L of this, um, of this wire, then the surface of a cylinder, the side surface of a cylinder, is 2 pi r, that's the length of the um, circle of the radius r, times L, right? So, let's forget about L for a second. What's important is this R. So, if I double, let's say, the distance, my circle will have twice as big the length, and the area of the cylinder will be also twice as big. So, for every L, it's inversely, uh, so the intensity should be inversely proportional to um, to the radius, actually to the 2 pi r, that's more convenient kind of a thing, because we are dividing by this um, length of this curve. Well, 2 pi is obviously just a multiplier, so it's just for a convenience purpose. What's important is it should be inversely proportional to r. So as radius is increasing, the uh, surface of the equal timing is increasing proportionally to R, and that's why intensity should decrease uh, by the factor of R. So that's one thing. Another thing is, magnetic field is related to movement of electrons, as we know. I mean, unless we have the current, there is no magnetic field. Well, obviously it's not like zero and, uh, zero and some particular uh, finite uh, number. Obviously, it depends on movements of electrons, and the more electrons are moved per unit of time, the greater magnetic field should be. Because every electron, by its movement, produce certain uh, magnetic effect. So, the more electrons, the more magnetic effect. It should be proportional. So, but we have come out with this, that this is supposed to be proportional to the current, which is basically number of electrons per unit of time, right? Q divided by uh, coulombs divided by, by seconds. And it should be inversely proportional to 2 pi r with a fixed length. Okay? So, this is, this is it. I mean, this is a final kind of a formula for intensity. All we need right now is some kind of a, this is proportionality. Now, for equal sign, we need some kind of a coefficient, which depends on the units of measurement. And obviously, this coefficient exists. It's something, it's whatever the number is, doesn't really matter right now. Uh, what is important is that it's proportional to I, to the current, to amperage, basically. And it's inversely proportional to the distance from this. And this is the most important part of this lecture. So, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to mu zero, which is actually some kind of a permeability of the space, magnetic uh, properties of maybe in vacuum, it's one thing, in some other um, area around this current, it will be something else. Um, you can probably shield from the magnetic field by using some kind of a metal around it. I mean, this is physics which are related to very, very practical aspects of this. The theory is this, proportional to the amperage, inversely proportional to the distance from this wire. And that's what makes actually the whole, you know, magnetic property uh, from the qualitative standpoint, important. And that would probably be it for today. So, this is it. This is magnetic uh, properties of a straight line current depending on the amperage uh, and uh, distance from this current. And don't forget that this is circular magnetic lines around this straight line current. These circles are, each one is in the plane perpendicular to the current, and obviously in each plane we have many. This is stronger 
because this particular uh, force, this energy, is spread only to a circle where a uh, lower radius, and the lower radius means um, less lengths of this uh, uh, circle, so the energy is spread to a smaller, um, a smaller area. And that's why the density of this energy, the intensity of this energy is greater. The closer you are to the wire, the greater the magnetic properties uh, you can observe. Well, that's it for today. I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. So you go to unisor.com to electromagnetism. That's among the Physics 14th course, of course. And uh, uh, in the electrical magnetism you will find magnetic properties of the electric current, and that's one of the lectures there. I think it's the first lecture of that topic. Okay, thank you very much, and good luck.